Thank you, Ryan. Good morning. I'm Superintendent Joe Gothard, and I'm glad that you're joining us here today. I'm also joined today by members of our senior executive leadership team and other staff from St. Paul Public Schools, and I wanted to provide you an update on our budget, on negotiations, and the overall work that our district is engaged in right now. Many of you know that we are currently bargaining with our largest bargaining group, the St. Paul Federation of Educators, or SPFE. This union represents teachers, educational assistants, and school and community service professionals. This total is 4,250 employees. When you look throughout the district, we have 26 other bargaining groups, and that total is 7,000 staff in St. Paul Public Schools. Every one of our staff over these last two years has endured incredibly challenging times. They've been there in so many different ways for our students, for our families, for each other. And I'm here to acknowledge that, that it's been deeply, deeply challenging for, for all of them, for all of us. The pandemic has created many problems. We knew going into the pandemic that we were challenged many times in public education. And the pandemic was able to shine a brighter light on some of those very challenges. St. Paul Public Schools families have also endured two years of extreme hardships. Uncertainty beginning with wondering how our students are going to learn and be supported, whether they were at home, online, or back in person part-time. I know that educating more than 30,000 students when they are kept from attending in-person instruction is by far the greatest challenge I've ever faced in my years in public education, likely for many, many others too. Long before the pandemic, St. Paul Public Schools started to see a decline in student enrollment going all the way back to 2015. Since 2020, our enrollment has decreased by more than 2,100 students. And this loss in total from funding is $28 million in, in state funding each year. So that uh, equates to incredible losses each year that have only compounded as the years go on. Earlier this week, we released our budget projections for the 2023 fiscal year. And we noted a loss of more than 1,877 students in our projections. And what that means is for St. Paul Public Schools next year in planning, we are going to have a $42.8 million shortfall. That is the difference in revenue that we receive with expenditures and how much it's going to cost for our district for us to maintain the same level of service. In addition, to the projections that we put in for inflation and any increases in those amounts as well. As an independent school district, we believe in collective bargaining. We sit down in good faith with, as I mentioned earlier, 27 different bargaining groups, and I think have really established some strong relationships. We've developed guiding principles and values with our Board of Education and our community, and we have tried to set up a routine, a way that we interact and work with all of our bargaining groups. And again, these last two years, that was tested as we had to, to change overnight how our district was going to serve our kids and serve each other. The most recent two-year contract with SPFE expired on July 1, 2021. During the term of that contract, SPPS invested heavily in school support staff, most of whom are SPFE members. Those investments are paying off for our students, and I wanted to provide you some examples of that. The ratio of counselors to students in the 2018-19 school year was one counselor for every 345 students. The ratio of students to counselors in the current school year is one counselor for every 230 students. The ratio of social workers to students in the 2018-19 school year was one social worker for every 305 students. Today, that ratio is one social worker for every 229 students. The ratio of intervention specialists to students in the 2018-19 school year was one intervention specialist for every 1,014 students. Today, that number is one intervention specialist for every 400 students. Before negotiations began, the Board of Education approved a salary increase of 1.5% for every new two-year contract for all of our 27 bargaining groups. As of today, three groups have settled their contracts within these guidelines. SPPS and SPFE began our negotiations in September of last year. In November, SPPS and SPFE entered into mediation. 
District and union leadership have been meeting regularly, exchanging proposals, ideas, attempting to get to a settlement, some agreement. But the fact remains that we remain unsettled at this point. At the end of the day, it really comes down to dollars and cents. And like everyone's personal budget, the district cannot spend more money than it takes in. As a district, we simply do not have the budget to support the wage increases and additional staff and other supports that SPFE is asking for. I am proud that St. Paul Public Schools offers some of the highest compensation for teachers in the state of Minnesota, and we should. But we also need to operate within our budgetary guidelines, and anything that we add in one area requires us to take away from somewhere else. I want to share a little bit about the American Rescue Plan dollars. As you know, St. Paul Public Schools is receiving $206.9 million in American Rescue Plan or COVID relief funds. I've been asked why this money isn't being spent on hiring staff or funding mental health services. The fact is, it is being spent on many of the priorities that we are being asked to fund. And I want to list off some examples for you. $22.8 million on mental health supports, including more school counselors, social workers, nurses, and health staff, partnerships with community organizations, training for staff on responding to trauma, and culturally responsive social emotional learning. $6.3 million on equity training for all staff and administrators, culturally responsive instruction, and a comprehensive district equity plan. $3.4 million on recruitment and retention of teachers of color and other staff of color, with a goal of increasing our teachers of color to 23%. And nearly $800,000 on multilingual staff and supports for English language learners and their families. More than 11,000 stakeholders participated in a needs assessment that helped us determine how we were to spend $207 million. And I'm proud to say that the White House has lifted our plan as a model for other school districts around the country. This federal funding is wonderful and we are working hard to make the best use of it, but it also has an expiration date. If we use it to hire permanent staff or increase wages before the board, wages across the board, we will not be able to sustain those investments past September of 2024, which is the current deadline for spending those dollars. Using these federal funds to fill holes now will only create larger problems down the line as we continue in this current trend. I also want to address some information that's been stated publicly during these negotiations. First, St. Paul Public Schools is not getting rid of recess. We have proposed removing recess language from the contract because it is not a term and condition of employment. I would never suggest taking recess away from all students. Another topic being discussed is smaller class sizes. And we are not saying we want 40 or 50 students in a classroom. But we are saying that the current parameters in the contract prevents flexibility and may have unintended budgetary and logistical impacts on our district. And I want to give you an example of this. If we were to reduce the class size average in cap by two students, that would be an additional investment of $11 million. So the $42.8 million that I shared earlier would become 53.8. And to put some other context on that, uh, one of the decisions we may be faced to make if we were to do that is we might say, you know what, let's reduce our transportation coverage by 100 buses and use that $10 million to fund a lower class size cap. What that would mean is 10,000 students wouldn't be able to get around and, tra and be transported to areas in the city uh, to perhaps get them to their choice school. So those are very real decisions that we have to make at this point when it comes down to having a limited pool of resources to make these really important decisions that everybody cares about and is passionate about and where we have agreement, likely all things that would help the district. As administrators, our job is to support what our students need while ensuring that we're spending dollars responsibly and equitably. More than ever, our students and families need stability and safety in school uh, for us to be able to provide the, the great service that we give, and it needs to be sustainable. Uh, we need to get to a point in time, we, we often talk about enrollment in St. Paul Public Schools, and everyone wants to jump to how are we going to increase enrollment. And the first step in increasing enrollment is stabilizing enrollment. It's sustaining the programs that we offer. It's sustaining a level of excellence in, in care and service 
that we're able to provide to our students and our families and the support that our staff need in order to do that. So before we have any increases in enrollment, we first have to stabilize and sustain our work and, and therefore the enrollment. You know, I'm committed to supporting our ongoing work for the more than 34,000 students in our school district. Uh, these are incredibly challenging times. Nobody will shy away from that. Uh, but it's also a time where more than ever, we need to come together as an organization, uh, be, being guided by our Board of Education, by our strategic plan, and we need to be focused on the needs of our students, our families, and supporting our staff in order to create the long-term student outcomes that this community has demanded from me and from all of us who make up St. Paul Public Schools.